Doctor. Glad to see you. This is Perry Gordon, and he's just been pledged. Son of Lee Gordon, 92. You remember him, don't you? Glad to meet you, sir. I'm glad to know you, sir. I remember your father well. He was a fine man. And I welcome you to Clifton and Kai Theta Kai as well. Thank you, sir. Come on, Perry, and let's see the trophy room and learn something about our venerable tradition. All right, come on, Kai Theta Quartet. Let's have some songs. Yeah. Sure, let's go. Let's go. Let's have all sentences first. That's fine. Let's go. All right, good. Doesn't that get you? Well, if it doesn't now, it will before you call it. <laughs> this is last year's championship football team. Undefeated and untied. Adam Blythe was the captain. Now there's the sort of man Kai Theta makes. He's still here. Finishes medical school this year. And although he had to work his way through, he made football, baseball, the crew, and Phi Beta Cap as well. Old Dean Todd says, he gives promise of being the best surgeon Clifton Medical ever turned out. Hmm. Hey, what a swell car. Belongs to Jerry Griffin. A boy's age, 5,000. Oh, hello, Jerry. We're oh. just talking about your car. I'm looking for Adam Blythe. We were talking about him, too. Have you seen him? No. But if what I hear about his engagement is true, you'll probably find him in the garden. I see. Thank you. Wonderful, isn't it, Anne? Just to think that Kai Thetis have been coming here for almost three generations, ever since the chapter was founded. It's kind of an institution, isn't it? Sort of an altar to romance. You're a sentimental sort, aren't you? Why, of course. Why shouldn't I be on a night like this and with a girl like you? And as to being sentimental about Clifton, why, it's the only real home I've ever known. And as you look at this symbol of fitting time, it reminds you that day after tomorrow it will all be over. Exactly. Monday I graduate and leave Clifton and all that it has meant. Books, classes, works, studies, friends and brothers. Oh, but I'll be repaid a thousand times for that, for I'll have you. And don't you know what that means to me? <laughs> you told me something of that sort last fall when you gave me your pin. I did try to tell you, I guess. But I was too happy, too excited to even talk coherently. Oh, well, don't talk like that, Adam. Don't place me on a pedestal. I don't want to mean too much to you. I'm afraid I couldn't live up to such ideals. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know as I mean anything, only we're not married yet. And that's still far off. You have a whole year as intern first, and then you'll have to build up a practice. Oh, Anne, darling, I love you. You don't know how hard I'll work. I am a good surgeon, if I say so myself. So you see, it won't take any time at all. Oh, I say, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't intrude for world. Hey, Mort, who's that? Oh. It's you, Adam, and Miss Clem. I say, old man, you've been hitting it up a bit, haven't you? Sure I have. Why not? Well, you just picked a poor night to celebrate, that's all. But I wasn't celebrating. I was drowning my sorrows. Well, you graduate Monday. No, that's a joke. I don't graduate on Monday. I don't ever graduate. Oh, shut up, Mort. You're drunk. That's right. But I still know what I'm talking about. I had one condition to make up. I had to take another examination, and I just found out an old Todd's a berry that flunked me. Oh, that's a shame, Mr. Todd, but I'm so sorry. Oh, you don't need to be sorry. I'm not suffering because they won't give me a two-buck piece of sheepskin. Only, only it makes sore to be flunked out by an old goat like Todd. He's had it in for me ever since the first day he ever saw me. Wait a minute, Mort. I don't believe that. Todd is strict but he's honest. 
And he's a Chi Theta. And a fine Chi Theta this makes him. I'll bet he's in there now. If he is, I'm going to tell him what I think. He'll be sorry he didn't give me a hundred plus. Wait a minute, Mort. You can't go in the house like this. Or you'll disgrace the chapter. Or they are guests present. Alumni and the pledges. You wait and see. Excuse me, honey. I'll be back in a few minutes. I've got to take care of the old roommate, you know. All right. Take your time, madam. I'll stay with Anne. She promised me this dance anyway. Oh, thanks, old fella. Poor old Adam. Always the father of the chapter. And why shouldn't he be? Oh, he takes life too seriously, that's all. But he's made good. Of course been chosen the man of all the chapter most likely to succeed. Don't you think he will? I suppose he will, of course, and in time. But you know what I mean. It isn't fair for you to be wasting the best years of your life waiting for him. Oh, please, Jerry. We've gone over that a dozen times. Yes, I know. But just the same, I'm not going to give up, ever. Your father was a doctor, Anne. You know how many years it takes to build up a practice. Long, bitter years. Little money. Waiting up nights answering calls. And all for what? I, I don't know. But you do know that I love you just the same as that. That I can offer you now more than he can offer you ten years hence. Why, I'm set. I can go in with Dad right now and give you everything. Uh, take off your things, Mort, and jump in bed and get a little rest. No, I'm not going to take them off. I'm going to pack up and leave. Going home. <laughs> I know that, but there's not a train till tomorrow. That's all right. I'll buy a Jerry's Roast. Hello. Have a drink? Oh, uh, well, no thanks. I haven't had a drop since my freshman year. I'm sort of afraid of this stuff. <laughs> I'm not afraid of anything. Well, I gotta be going, Mort. Well, go ahead. I've got company. Oh, by the way, you won't go downstairs, will you? Word of honor? No. Good night, old timer. Good night, you lucky stiff. Say, give my regards to Miss Clement. She's a peach. Uh, you're right about that. And I am lucky. Sure. Hello, Adam. Where have you been? Oh, I've been sitting up with a sick friend. <laughs> have you seen Miss Clement? Why, yes. She just started for home. Home? Well, she had her wraps on. No. No. Anne! What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'm just tired. Why, something must be wrong. What is it? Jerry, did he do or say anything he shouldn't? Uh, no, no, no. It wasn't anything like that. Why, something's wrong. What is it? Well, it's... It's just that I've been thinking things over, and I can't go through with it. You mean... You mean you're not going to marry me? You're breaking our engagement? Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. But, Anne, I don't understand. Only a few moments ago... No, oh, I told you that I... I thought things out, and I... I... But, Anne, you're crazy. You can't go like this. I've got to know what's happened. You said you love me, so it can't be anybody else. So that's it. It's Grotten. That's his pin. Now I'm beginning to understand. You couldn't wait till I made good. Not when you had a chance to marry a man with a rich family. Adam, people are looking. Well, let them look. All that they can see is a man who loved a girl better than anything else in his life. And a girl who never loved anything except herself and money and all that it'll buy. Why, you cheap oh. little... Let me go. <laughs> Good 
Ahoy. Hmm? What? What's the matter? Didn't you ask me to have a drink? Yeah. But you said you didn't drink. That was when I had every reason not to drink. All I have now is a reason to drink. To drink and forget. Forget what? To forget what a fool I've been. And how sordid and selfish a girl can be. What girl? The girl who is to be Mrs. Jerry Graffin, the wife of the wealthy young society doctor from Boston. Graffin? Say, that's rotten. Look here. Two more drinks like that and you'll forget everything. You'll even forget to graduate. Oh, I'll graduate all right. Then I'll go away. Go where no one knows me or her or anybody. Where I can keep on trying to forget. June 14th, two years ago today. Hello? What did you say? A gastroenterostomy case? Okay, Thompson. Room six, right away. Waiting, Doctor. Harry, have you got a drink in your locker? Sorry, but I haven't. And I could use a shot myself. I think you'd better hurry. It's an emergency case, you know. She's gone. No. I'll have it for you in just a minute, sir. There's been a little too much of this sort of thing, Smith. I really needed a little stimulant, sir. I haven't been well. 
You've been ill entirely too often lately. I tried to buy some Saturday when I got my money. You know it's against the law to sell anything without a prescription. But I... I'm sorry, Smith. But I guess you'll have to go. And six million men out of work. You hungry, brother? No. Thirsty? Thanks. Not bad, huh? Like some more and a uh, hundred bucks besides? What's the answer? Well, it's this way. There's a truckload of stuff coming into the Eagle Garage about midnight tonight. Now, if you and me and a couple of other young fellows I know... Hijacking, huh? I've got to be going, fella. Thanks for the drink. Well, does it suit you, sir, or would you prefer the town car for the night? Once, a long time ago, I had a friend. Uh, that is, uh, I knew a man that, that had a swell roadster. Well, you don't say so. Uh, he, he drove away with a, with a young lady just as the clock was tracking. Oh, that must have been Cinderella with that prince, uh, what's his name? Uh, Oh, that was, that was long before I was the animal man. Here, here, here. here. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, I'll take care of Mr. Talbot. Just some goofy hobo. Oh, let me have a look at him. Come on, give me a hand. Take him inside. Well, that's about all, Mort. It isn't a very pretty story, is it? It's terrible, Adam. Terrible. But I don't blame you. I blame Ann. Oh. Oh, but I was such a chump to take it so to heart. <laughs> you do the same thing again. You're the type that idealizes all women equally, good and bad alike. Yes. I guess I am sort of sentimental. Even when things were darkest, I used to wonder what was happening back at Clifton. Have you ever been back? No. I'd like to go back, I think. Just once more. Oh, but they'd be ashamed to acknowledge a poor tramp like me. Adam, do you suppose they all know why you've never practiced? No. 
what happened at the hospital was was just considered an accident. Then there's no reason why you shouldn't go back. Listen, Adam. They thought I was a failure. Well, they wouldn't even give me a diploma. Then I made a couple of million. And after that, I was the fair-haired boy. They've written and begged me to go back. Why, they'd probably name the new hospital after me, <laughs> if I didn't know it. Well, we'll go back, and I'll play the big shot. And I'll get a great kick out of making you just as big as I am. Oh, but Mort, I can't go back. Yes, you can. And you don't need to think that you're imposing if I stake you to a few things. I'll get just as much fun out of it as you will. So it's all set. Let's see. Commencement week is next month. You'll rest up here for a couple of weeks, and then we'll shove off for... for dear old Clifton. For dear old Clifton. Welcome to the Cartheta House, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, may I take your things? Oh, uh... I'm Brother Talbot, 1914. Oh, I'm Brother Clark. Glad to know you, sir. Thank you. He's the guy that cornered United Motors. Here's our chance to get a new dining room set. And this is Brother Blythe, also 1914. <laughs> Dr. Blythe has been abroad for a number of years. Well, I'm glad to know you, too, sir. Someday you'll see his statue in the Hall of Fame. Oh, uh, Brother O'Malley, Brother Talbot. How do you do, How do you Brother do, Talbot? And Brother Dr. Blythe. Very glad to meet you, sir. Hello. Oh, we've heard of Dr. Blythe but sort of given up hopes of ever meeting him. Uh, <laughs> shall I send one of the pledges for your luggage? No, thanks. We're staying at the campus inn. Uh, Dean Todd is in the library. I'm quite sure you'd be glad to see him. Yes. Come along, Adam. Well, we'll see you later. Yeah. Well, well, Dean. How are you? How do you do? Oh, I see you don't remember me. I'm Mort Talbot. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is Adam Blythe, Doctor. Yes, uh, I remember you well. Very happy to be back, Doc. But I bet you don't know what he's been doing. He's the most famous specialist in Europe. His name alone will, will someday be sufficient to make Clifton famous. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, just what is your specialty, Doctor? Oh, why, uh, why, he's the head of the Blythe Clinic. Private research and all that. It's the best-known institution on the continent. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, I remember having uh, heard about it, uh, but uh, I can't just place it. Uh, must be getting a bit old. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, just where is it, Doctor? Why, it's in... Uh, How's the new hospital? Oh, splendid, sir. Splendid. Wonderful. Mm, well equipped, I suppose. Well, not as completely as we would like to. Uh, uh, and Clifton must have the best. Oh, of course. Yeah. You... You emphasized that in your letter regarding the endowment. Uh, oh, you got a letter? Mm. Oh, then you are Morton Talbot, the... Millionaire. Oh, yes. The more successful type of businessman, let us say. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, you need equipment for the new hospital. Oh, yes, very badly indeed. And you'd like me to give something? Oh, uh, yes, that, that would be very nice of you. Then I will. Thanks. I'd give you some excellent advice. Buy domestic equipment. It's just as good and far cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you two fellas, come on, we need you in the quartet. We're going to sing old Clifton. Come on.
see it's wonderful. Mm. Just think, June. For three generations, Chi Theta men have been bringing their sweethearts here. You're a sentimental sort, aren't you, Kenneth? Why shouldn't I be? I'm going to marry a girl like you. Ken, dear, that'll be years from now. I do love you. And I hope I always shall. But isn't it silly to announce an engagement and wait five, six years to get married? Oh, June, you don't give a man a break. I finished medical school in two years. Then a year as intern, I'll be an honest-to-goodness M.D. And then you just begin to practice. Oh. If you feel that way about it, maybe you should marry a man well-established. Like Dean Todd. That's not fair. But if that's the way you feel about it... Oh, uh, June, I, d I didn't mean that. You can still wear my pin, can't you? I'd rather not. Perhaps later. There won't be any later. You've said that before. is my mother's name. Your mother? Yes. I'm June Grattan. I, I'm Adam Blythe. I knew your mother well when we was in college. Oh, and you thought just now I was she? <laughs> Evidently, you haven't seen mother for some time. For some years. I'd hate to say exactly how many. <laughs> so would she, I imagine. But she's here tonight with father. Gerald Grattan? Oh, naturally. I miss Grattan. Please, Miss Grattan, don't misunderstand. Your mother was a good friend, and you look so much like her. Shakespeare says, he who doth protest too much is guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really beginning to believe I've discovered an old romance. Let's find Mother. Of course, Blythe isn't at all the sort to publicize himself, and his work is known to very few. But his accomplishments will mean more to humanity than those of any other living man. Why, Chi Theta will point to him someday as the most worthy brother ever admitted. And you, Dean Todd, will be proud to have had the privilege, the honor, of being his instructor. Oh, Adam, I was just telling them something of your work. Why, Dr. Blythe has actually accomplished miracles. What? I'm afraid you're putting it on rather thick, Mort. Not at all. I would like your opinion on our new hospital, Doctor. Perhaps you have some suggestions to offer. Oh, why, uh... I'll say... Yes. Shall we say tomorrow? That will be fine. Say at two o'clock. Oh, why, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm sure the Doctor will have some very valuable information for us. Mm. Will you excuse me, please? Yes. Yeah. Adam. Oh, it's so good to see you again, Adam. June tells me of the marvelous things that you've been doing. Oh, indeed he has. Why, he's quite the most famous doctor in the world. Well, I do hope that we'll see something of you while you're here. We're at the campus inn. Why don't you come for tea tomorrow? I'll be delighted. I'm sorry, but uh, Adam is inspecting the new hospital tomorrow afternoon. Why, Mort Talbot. How do you do, Aunt? Perhaps you'd like to join us. Thanks, I'd love to. And Miss Grattan, too, I hope. Oh, of course. Hello, Talbot. I haven't seen you in years. No, nor Dr. Blythe either, I imagine. Oh, hello, Blythe. Mr. Grattan, 
Well, uh, then we'll see you tomorrow? Yes. Good night. Good night. Hey. My, how distinguished he looks. And they say he has his own clinic in Germany. And he's made just millions. I wish you had kept up your practice like that. It done something worthwhile. I've done the best I could, Anne, I'm sure. Perhaps so, but the fact still remains that you haven't done anything. <coughs> this is our new clinic, which should be of uh, considerable interest to you, Adam. Oh, uh, yes. If there is an operative case in there now, perhaps the ladies would oh, like to... Oh, may we? I'd love yes. it. Certainly. Thanks. Oh, Dean. Yes. I've been thinking that matter over, and I fully understand your position. Now, I'm willing to do my bit toward the endowment. Yes. But, frankly, I'd do a great deal more if I were convinced that a uh, brilliant surgeon like... Uh, like Adam Blythe would be in charge. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um, Blythe is a great friend of yours, I know. And uh, I do recall that he was brilliant as a student. Oh, yeah. But uh, we don't know anything about his work since. And I'm afraid the Board of Governors might... Uh, well, uh, you understand. Yes, of course. There is an interesting case coming up a little later, Adam. A gastroenterostomy. You know what a delicate uh, operation that is. Wouldn't be so tough for you, eh, Adam? Why? I haven't been doing much uh, surgical... Oh, don't be so modest. You know, when he says he hasn't been doing much work, he means that he's only been doing about twice as much as any two men could do. <laughs> See Adam do that operation you speak of? I'm sure it would be perfectly done. Oh, it's wonderful to have the ability to alleviate suffering. Adam, uh, will you excuse us, please? For a man now, do this operation and you'll be in full charge of this hospital for the rest of your life. doctor's wife, but I've never seen anything like that. Well, I've studied surgery a bit myself, and that was a masterly job. Great work, old man. <laughs> Thanks, Mort. As well done as anything I have ever seen. Thank you, Dean. Congratulations, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. Great work, Dr. Blythe. I only hope I can do as well someday. I'm sure you will. Thank you. It was wonderful. I could love you for that. Thanks, June. So you believe me now? I do indeed. And I will recommend him for the position just as soon as I possibly can. Why is it you never speak of your work over there, your clinic? I, I'm too happy here. Besides, I shall never back. You're not going back. I'll tell you in comments. Dean Tide has offered me full charge of the Clifton Research Memorial. Oh, Adam, Adam, I'm so happy. Are you? Does it mean that much? 
means a great deal. Um, what about young Barkley? Oh, he's only a boy. <laughs> so was I once. And now you're a great doctor. Famous and successful. Suppose I weren't. I'd love you just the same. You love me. I didn't mean that. I... Why, why, of course you didn't. You're an impulsive child. But if you did... Yes, Adam. We'd better wait, June, and be certain. Maybe someday... All right, dear. I'll wait. Making yourself pretty, eh? Why not? For me, of course. Oh, you don't answer. So possibly it's for Blythe again. You certainly kept on his trail. But I'm not greatly worried. There's very little danger of my losing my precious wife, so long as my beautiful young... What do you mean by that? Don't pretend you don't know what the whole campus is talking about. Well, I know that June's been going about with Dr. Blight, but that's all. Why, well, he's old enough to, to be... To be a... in the dangerous 40s. Just then, that's all. Oh, Anne. Why must it be like this? I'm jealous, yes, because I love you. I've tried to give you everything I could to make you happy. You're so cold. Sometimes I think you hate me. Sometimes I do. So you mean to say you're going to start all over again with Blythe? Perhaps. You're not. I took you away from him because I loved you. And I still do. And if you think I'll let you go back to him now or ever, you're very much mistaken. So I warn you, both for your sake as well as his, you do. Pleasant walk, dear? Yes, very. Dr. Blight? Uh-huh. Where did he go? He's in his room, I think. He had to make some notes for his speech tonight. The alumni dinner, you know. You like Dr. Blythe, don't you, dear? Why, a splendid man. More so than young Barclay? Oh, they're so different, Mother. Kenneth's only a child. Adam's been tried and proven. Well, I hope you wouldn't be foolish. I might. Oh, that's ridiculous. I don't see why. Well, I do. You're only a child. I was a child. <laughs> I don't believe I am anymore. So you've up, have you? I think so. Well, you'd better think again, young lady. And if Dr. Blythe is putting any foolish nonsense into your head, it's about time that you don't see him anymore. But I shall see him. Even if I forbid it? Yes. Even if you forbid it. Oh, Mother, we're being silly. Despite what you say, I'm not a child any longer. I understand, June. I shan't forbid you seeing the doctor. I knew you wouldn't. Was Mr. Talbot with uh, the doctor when you left him? I don't think so, Mother. Oh. Well, uh, dinner's at seven, dear. I'll see you then. All right. Come in. Anne. Surprise? Why, yes, a bit. Did you have a seat? I expected you. You expected my daughter, perhaps. Oh, Adam, I've seen, but you can't get away with it. I don't understand. I'm trying to get away with anything. You aren't, really? Really what? Aren't you trying to get away with June? Your intimation is decidedly unpleasant. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. I don't mean half what I say, honestly. It was Jerry. He unnerved me. Jerry? He implied that I was uh, making a fool of myself, throwing myself at you, when after all, it's June that you're mad about. 
June. The way you say her name makes me think that he was right. Was he? Are you in love with her? Why, Anne, I'm old enough to be a father. That's what I said. But that doesn't answer the question. Are you in love with June? Perhaps I am. So that's it. He was so happy just now. You told her and she, childlike, would step off her feet because the world-famous surgeon, the Lion of Commencement Week, was kneeling at her feet. Well, why shouldn't she be happy? Because it would be at my expense and I won't permit it. I don't see how you can prevent it. Well, I can and I will. How? I'll tell her. Why? That you are her, her father. Why, Anne, you know that's a lie. <laughs> of course. But who can prove that it is? But, Anne, you're crazy. No, I'm only in love. But you'd wreck yourself, your reputation, your whole life. What do I care? But you'd wreck hers, too. June's. Why, she'd lose faith in everything. But she'd never marry you. Adam, there's just one chance, and that's for you to decide. I'll come here tonight after the alumni dinner. I'll be packed and ready. You meet me, and we can go away together. And in time, we can be married. But if you're not here, I'll tell her exactly what I said, and I'll make her believe me. And you're mad. No, Adam. Can't you see? This is the beginning of our happiness together. You'll be at the dinner tonight? Of course. I wouldn't miss hearing you speak. Then I'll be here not later than 10. I'll meet you if you wish. I'll be here, Adam. And then we can make up for all the years that we've lost. I wonder. We will. Oh, I'm so happy, Adam. Friends, we will now hear from one of Clifton's most famous sons. A man of whom we are all justly proud. Dr. Adam Light. Members of the faculty, fellow alumni, and guests of the occasion. As many of you already know, I am the recipient of a great honor. Through Dean Todd, I have been offered the position of resident doctor in charge of the new Clifton Research Laboratories and Hospital. <laughs> to Dean Todd and to more Talbot, and to other friends who were responsible for the bestowal of this great honor, I am deeply grateful. However, it is impossible in all fairness to Clifton and to my friends for me to accept this position of trust. Gentlemen, I am an imposter, a fraud. Stop it. He doesn't know what he's saying. I, I never studied abroad. I never had a clinic anywhere. From the day I graduated, I became nothing better than a drunkard. And as a result of my drinking, a patient died. And then, not being man enough to fight my way back again, I disappeared. I worked whenever I could. I did odd jobs. I washed windows, shoveled snow. And when I didn't work, I starved. And what is worse, I thirsted for alcohol. Finally, I, I drifted into a town in the Middle West.
Is he really dead, mister? Not yet. Maybe I can help him. Maybe I can still save a dog. Now, if you'll help me, son, I'll do the best I can. Is there any place we can take him? There's our garage. We ain't got no car. All right, we'll take him there. There's our garage. Who can get us some clean rags, a large needle, and some white thread? I can, sir. All right. Now we need some medicine to sterilize. That is, to clean the wounds. Jimmy's daddy owns a drugstore over there. Oh, that's fine. Go ask your daddy for some green alcohol, uh, for medicine. Tell him about the accident and why you need it. Dad. No, Sonny. You'll have to be brave and help me. But it's going to be all right if we can just get his little tummy patched up. Yeah, I hope so. Here's the cloth and needle and thread, mister. Thanks. I'm going to let you thread it, sister. Then you'll be really healthy. I got the alcohol for you. Now, you youngsters, keep your eye on sister. I bet you've never seen anyone thread a needle so quickly. All right, here's the operating table. Sister, you spread on the sheet. See, folks, this is just like a clinic. A clinic is where students stand around and learn to become doctors by watching a real doctor operate. And believe it or not, I'm a doctor. An animal doctor? Yes, I guess that's what I am, an animal doctor. I like you, animal man. Bless your heart, honey. That's the nicest thing I've heard in a long while. Now, Sonny, I guess Buddy's going to be all right. If we can just find a place for him so he'll be quiet for a while. If it's Pat's dog you're speaking about, there's no place to keep him but in his own garage. My. You've made a regular doctor-like job of him. The poor little tight. Come on now, make him a bed so as he can be quiet, like the doctor said. Well, goodbye, madam. I hope Buddy will be all right. And where might you be going? Oh, anywhere. Oh, sure. Any place is no place. Why can't he stay here, Mom? Keep taking care of Buddy. The lad's right. And any man that can be as kind to an animal as you should have some place to rest his head. I'm thinking you'd better stay the night at least. Thank you. Gee, Ma, that's well. Come now. You can be running along, children. The gentleman says the dog is to your face and quiet. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, kids. Bye. Bye. Bye, animal man. Goodbye, little sister. Come now, son. We'll be sending you down some blankets. And a bit of supper as well. Thank you, madam.
Then I doctored cats, horses, cows, but never a human ill did I cure. I was just the animal man, the village drunkard that only the children would talk to. But that didn't even last. They wouldn't even let me be the animal man. Most successful operation, the best I ever did, really. And now the patient is exactly as good as new. Are you the man called Adam? Why, I'm not the first man by that name. Now, don't try to get funny. I'm the town marshal, and I'm looking for John Doe Adam. Well, that might mean me. You're doing some operating around here, ain't you? Some. What are you doing there? Nothing surgical, I assure you. No? Well, we'll see. My dolly. The animal man fixed her head, so it would nod. Oh, I see. Listen, mister. I've got a complaint here, signed by Dr. Shaw, charging John Doe Adam with practicing without a license. But I'll say this. If you're out of town by tonight, why, I reckon, uh, well, I reckon I just can't find you. You mean I'm uh, subject to arrest for the work I'm doing? That's right. And I've got to leave? Unless you want to go to jail. <laughs> That's a dirty shame. Sorry, youngster, but the law is the law. You understand now? <laughs> well, kids, that. No, no, sister. Just wait till I tell a gang about old Doc Shaw. <laughs> hey, Pat. Yeah? Do you know anybody that wants pets? Sure I do. Well, you go get them here right away. Goodbye, Pat. Bye. Goodbye, buddy. Be just as good as you can to the neighbor's cat. Goodbye, little sister. Goodbye, animal man. Goodbye, Goodbye kid. So how could I dare, with all that behind me, accept your splendid offer? I can only say that I was proud desire to return here once more, to Clifton, my old home, to live again one brief week those olden days. Of such were the desires, my deceit was born. To all of you who, who love Clifton will understand that. There is no one else to blame. Dean Todd and Demore Talbot and the others who helped were honest in their belief that I, that I was a man for the place. But you know now that I'm not.
are you doing here? It was wonderful. It was the only brave and manly thing to do. And it showed me that whatever you might have been once, you've risen above that now. I hope so. I know so. And I'm going with you regardless of what the world thinks. And prove that I'm right. But suppose you're wrong. Suppose I remain just what I am. A tramp, a hobo. Don't you understand yet? I haven't even any place to go. These clothes I wear were bought by Mort. I haven't a dime. Before I get work again, I may have to steal rides, beg food, and sleep in rancid, filthy flop houses. Oh, don't you see, dear? It's all just a dream. I'm an old man, a failure. You are young with the world before you. Isn't it probable that what you thought was love for me was just the infatuation of a girl for a man whom she thought brilliant, clever, and successful, sort of hero worship? Go back to Kenneth. He's young, clean, and real. You may have to wait a year or so, but you're young, too. Believe me, June. I once knew a girl just like you. But she wouldn't wait. She wanted all that life had to offer at once. She got it. But she's regretted it ever since. You do love Kenneth, don't you? I think so. I might have known that I'd find you here. I saw you slip away, but I thought you'd have the decency to go to your own room. Didn't you hear this man admit his shame to the world tonight? I heard him speak at dinner. If that's what you mean. Then why degrade yourself further by coming here and risk your reputation and mine and your father's? Get your rest. Your mother's right, June. You'd better go. Quite a reunion, isn't it? My wife and her lover. I begged you to be careful. And this is your answer. I'm not blaming him, but you. Jimmy! Thanks, Grattan. This is the kind of thing that could have happened. Adam! I'm sorry, Mort, old friend. I just couldn't carry on, so I took the easiest way. Remember, Mort, I did it. I'm just a quitter. Oh. I enjoyed coming back to old Clifton, Mort. And I'm grateful to you, Mort. But I, I guess I should have stayed where I was. And always been the animal man. It's, it's a funny world, isn't it? Listen. Listen. Oh, oh I wish I could go back just once more. And so, 
through the generosity of our esteemed alumnus, Martin Talbot, we dedicate this new science building in honor of his late friend and classmate, Adam Light. Have the boys sing Old Clifton. Adam would like that. Yes, sir. 